Good afternoon po again sa inyong lahat. Maraming salamat po for joining us for our session this afternoon. So this afternoon, we will be beginning with our discussion on our first online class. Thank you for joining us. Unang-una, thank you po sa pagpunta natin dito. We are already 25 in our session this afternoon. Thank you po sa pagsama sa atin ngayong hapon. Ang question ko po man, naririnig po ba ako ng lahat? Okay po ba yung reception ko sa inyong mga bahay-bahay? Hello? Uh, thank you sa mga sumagot. Sa mga may audio, hindi kayo mag okay. Thank you very much. Okay, very good. Magandang hapon po. Thank you po sa inyong pagsama again sa atin sa hapon pong ito. And we will be continuing and starting on with our discussion today. This afternoon, our discussion will be about the basics. So, sa hapon pong ito, our discussion will be about the key concept in ethics. Ito po yung ating unang pag-uusapan. And there are some topics that we will be covering this afternoon. And part of our discussion will be the following. We will be discussing about moral dilemmas, moral standards, three levels of moral dilemma, and also we will be discussing freedom as foundation of Ethics. Part of our learning objectives are the following. Unang una, we will try to differentiate between moral and non-moral standards. Number two, to recognize and recall a moral experience. Also, for um, or for our third learning objective, we will be we will try to detect when can we see that we are in a situation that there is already a moral dilemma. Number four, we'll try to identify the three levels of moral dilemmas. And number five, we will explain why only human beings can actually be ethical. Okay, so magandang hapon po ulit. As we move along with our discussion, we will now be proceeding with this one. Um, concept of euthanasia. When we talk about euthanasia, everyone, we talk about the idea of ending the suffering of an individual because at least according to our slide here sometimes death ends suffering and not life it says here that sometimes death ends suffering and not life now when we talk about this one people what is important for us to understand is that euthanasia is being practiced by some countries around the world. In many parts of the world, the issue of legalizing euthanasia, which is also considered as assisted suicide, it has gone through major debates and people have actually questioned the morality of the act. There are some countries which has so far legalized euthanasia or what we call as assisted suicide. However, here in the Philippines, it is yet to be seen whether euthanasia will become a law or not. In 2017, this was back in 2017 in Australia, the Australian State Parliament of Victoria okay, has legalized voluntary euthanasia after 20 years. Now, here's uh, on your screen, you will see here the tweets of uh, State Premier Daniel Andrews, who was a euthanasia advocate after his father died of cancer in 2016, and he called euthanasia as compassionate. Now, pakibasahin natin yung tweet dito ni uh, Premier, State Premier Daniel Andrews when he said, we are now one final step away from voluntary assisted dying becoming law. The bill will go to the lower house to confirm the cross-party changes that were made in the upper house. Now, meron siyang kasunod na tweet. Ang sabi niya rito, let's remember what we are debating here. The most conservative voluntary assisted dying model that has ever been proposed, let alone implemented anywhere in the world and he ended by saying this legislation is safe the purpose is clear the time has come sabi pa niya sa kanyang mga tweet no sabi niya i'm proud to have made this reform and to have led a team that has delivered the sort of leadership that all victorians pag sinabi natin victoria in the state of victoria in australia can be very much proud of now, ang konteksto po ng ating pinag-uusapan dito is the context of euthanasia. 
Okay, ang pinag-uusapan po natin dito ay konteksto ng euthanasia. Let's first try to define what euthanasia is all about. Now, according to the Handbook of Clinical Neurology in 2013, ito po yung kanilang definition ng euthanasia. Aldrich, naririnig mo ba ako, Aldrich? Are you there? Yes, sir. Hi, Aldrich. Kindly read the definition of euthanasia according to the Handbook of Clinical Neurology, please. Voluntary active euthanasia is the administration by the physician of a lethal agent or the administration of a therapeutic agent at a lethal dose, actively permitted by the patient with the intent to cause the latter's death for the purpose of relieving intolerable, intractable, and incurable pain. Thank you very much, Aldrich. So this is how the Handbook of Clinical Neurology defined euthanasia. It is what? Uh, voluntary active euthanasia, ang sabi nila, is the administration nino ng doctor by the physician of a lethal agent. When we say lethal agent, nakamamatay. Okay? Or the administration of a therapeutic agent at a lethal dose. Okay? Ma-overdose naman. Okay? Actively permitted by the patient, meaning there is an active participation by the patient dahil may go signal sa pasyente na ibigay sa kanya yon with the intent, the sole purpose of which is to cause the latter's death for the purpose of what? Relieving intolerable, intractable, and incurable pain. This is how euthanasia was actually defined. Now, when we talk about euthanasia, okay, pag pinag-usapan natin ang konsepto ng euthanasia, we try to understand that physician-assisted suicide is the doctor's deliberate assistance in implementing a patient's suicide plan. So when we talk about euthanasia, parang doon yung jargon napaka-technical pa. But then again, if we're going to look at it from a layman's perspective, we say that this is actually an assistance to the patient in implementing a patient's suicide plan. Okay, I hope it is clear when we talk about what euthanasia or voluntary active euthanasia is all about. Do we have any questions so far? My questions for Batayo. Batayong tanong dito? No, po, sir. Answer. Wala pa namang tanong so dito. Okay, so far, Kaya so po, good. Sir. Kahit pa paano. Now, the <clears throat> question natin dito ng euthanasia, ibabalikan natin since our discussion is all about ethics, right? We talk about what is right and wrong. We talk about the morality of actions of people. And so, as we move along, mamaya, babalikan po natin yung konsepto ng um, euthanasia. Now, when we talk about ethics, okay, ang pinag-uusapan natin dito, ulitin ko po, is what do we mean when we talk about what is right and wrong? And in the context of euthanasia, the question is, is it morally right to end the life of an individual even just by administering what the patient so wishes? Tama ba? Is it a moral act? to end the life of an individual even by just administering what the patient so wishes. Um, meron pa tayong mga pwedeng uh, tanungin pa rito. Um, Isaiah Manuel, are you there? Isaiah, walang audio, no? Okay. Um, Jason Locinerio. Jason, are you there? May audio ba si Jason? Hello, Jason. Yes, sir. Hi, Jason. Okay. Ang um, question ko dito, what do you think of uh, this question? Okay. Ano kayang pwede nating isagot dito? Tama ba? Okay. Is it morally right na tapusin ang buhay ng isang taong nagsasuffer? Okay. Kung yun naman ay ibinibigay mo lang kung ano yung hinihiling ng, isya, ng isang pasyente. The question here is, is voluntary active euthanasia correct for you? What do you think, Jason? Para sa akin po. Yes, sir. Bakit po? Kasi kung talagang nahirapan na po yung pasyente, kung gusto niya na po na talagang tapos yung buhay niya, bibigay na po ng... Pwede gumawa sa so kanya na... So it's just okay for yung... you? 
Okay? It's not it's an uh, immoral act to end the life of an individual sa euthanasia. Jason, sure. tama? Okay, thank you very much. Point well yes, taken. Sir. Maraming salamat, Jason. Um, Daniel Alon Alon, are you there? Daniel, hello. Hi, Daniel. Daniel Alon Alon, hello. Nandiyan ba si Daniel Alon Alon? Mukhang wala siyang um, audio. Okay, sa kasalukuyan. Evander Evangelio, nandiyan ka ba? Okay lang, Daniel, naintindihan natin. Evander Evangelio, are you there? Hello, Evander. Ayan, medyo may nagkakaproblema yata yung uh, uh, audio rito ni Evander. Anybody, sino pong gustong sumagot dito? Do you think it's morally right to end the life of an individual? Okay? Even by just administering what the patient so wishes. If you want to answer, kindly click doon sa may baba ninyo yung raise your hand button doon after po noong share video and then raise hand so I can recognize you. If you have any questions or if you want to answer. Meron bang gustong sumagot dito? Ayun na, nagsimula na ang recitation natin. Hi, Benigno. Hello, sir. Uh, uh, what's your answer, sir? Go ahead. Uh, sir, para sa, para sa akin, sir, ano po, depende po yes, kasi ahead. po sa ano, sir, sa tao, o kaya sa pamilya, sir. Pag nahihirapan po yung tao, ano siya, sir, pwede na po siya para sa akin, i-euthanasia, sir. Uh, for you, it's just fine. Okay, point well taken. Thank you very much, sir. Now, pepreno ako ng konte because perhaps some or, or meron sa situation ng uh, mga kamag-anak natin or kakilala natin who have been through this because there's a lot of factors that we need to consider. It's not just a matter of just looking at it face value, but you have to consider a lot of factors before we even make decisions, okay, in doing um, euthanasia perhaps. Now, let's go back to this one. Now, if it is actually morally right, okay, where then is the morality of euthanasia? Now, here, moral and ethical principles and standards will be challenged if not questioned because as social dynamics have led many to become more accepting and understanding of personal decisions in light of moral issues. And when you talk about how we view the idea of um, euthanasia in the Philippines is very much different from how Westerners or other Asians would look at the concept of um, euthanasia. Perhaps we talk about how we value life in particular if we try to understand and know the concept of euthanasia and if ever we want to understand where it's all coming from. Now, let's look at the concept of moral standards. Let's talk about moral standards. Now, in making moral decisions, ang tanong natin dito, what standards are we supposed to follow when we make decisions, when we make moral decisions? Ang tanong is, what standards are we supposed to follow? And another thing is, who made these standards? And if we are to follow these standards, will following these standards make us all ethically moral? Now, these are but a few questions that need to be answered as we are compelled to decide or abide by our ethical principles every day of our lives. Now, the rightness or wrongness of an act. Okay, willingly or unwillingly always confronts the morality of our decisions. However, it is very important for us to understand and we analyze carefully not only the motive of our action, hindi lang yung motibo ng action natin, but also to be certain that our actions are indeed keeping up with the ethical values that we have. Okay, of course, at the forefront ng discussion natin ito is the value that we give to moral standards that serve as our, the, as our guide sa kung ano yung tama at ano ang mali. We have to admit that we are tied to some sense of moral decisions that we bring with us as we make moral decisions. Itong mga standards na ito, sa lipun na natin, they, they somehow serve as our compass. When we say, when we say that they serve as a, a compass, they allow us to check Okay, a sort of a light in our path that allows us to check if our actions are actually right 
or wrong. The question of what is morally right has somehow uh, hounded men throughout history. This has been a question ever since. Philosophers, ethicists, uh, they have all uh, asked what is it to be moral and what is it to be non-moral. Somehow, we allowed ourselves to be judged by standards that we have imposed upon ourselves. Sino ba ang nagsiset ng mga moral standards na ito? Definitely tao. At kapag ang tao ay nagset ng moral standards, matatali siya doon sa standard na kanyang ginagawa. And so, in our attempt to somehow perfect our actions and somehow perhaps to live in peace with our fellows and with nature, if we are going to look at it from that perspective, we deem it necessary okay, to create an ethical standard, perhaps to know whether our actions are actually good or not, or perhaps kung tayo ay nagkakamali na sa ating mga actions. Okay? As we go along with our discussion, of course, titignan din natin yung ibig sabihin ng konsepto ng Morality. Anybody who wants to read this slide, please. Raise your hand lang po. Okay, sa gusto pagbasa po nito. Sige po, wag po kayong mahiya. Hi, Daryl. Go ahead, please. Kindly read. Morality is the effort to guide one's con conduct by reason. That is to do what there are the best reasons for doing while giving equal weight to the interest of each individual who will be affected by, one, by what one does. Okay, thank you very much, Darrell. Again, when you talk about morality, when we talk about morality, this is the effort. There's always that effort. Why? Kasi tayong mga tao, we always want to do what is right. But seemingly, bakit ganun na kahit na gusto natin gumawa ng tama, eh hindi natin magawa ang tama. I remember, I, I think this was during my childhood when there was a rap song which became very popular that goes like, gusto kong bumait pero di ko magawa. I'm not sure if you're familiar. <laughs> With that. Perhaps your 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 parents. So, at ano yung mga parents niyo? Alam nila yung gusto ko ng bumaet pero di ko magawa. Well, that is a song, but definitely there is some truth to it. Okay, makikita natin na yes, totoong gusto nating bumaet, gusto nating gawin yung tama, pero maraming pagkakatao hindi natin magawa kung ano yung tama. So when we talk about morality and doing what is right and wrong, there always has to be an effort. And when we talk about the effort to do what is good, we talk about morality as the effort to guide one's conduct by what? By reason. Okay? And when we talk about reason, are we referring doon sa puso natin? No. Ang pinag-uusapan natin dito ay ano? Yung isip ng isang tao. Morality is the effort to guide one's conduct by reason. Ibig sabihin, to do what they're are the best reasons for doing. Bakit ba natin ginagawa ito? Is it reasonable? Is it justifiable? Is it right? At the same time, while we try to give way to the interests of the people around us na maaapektuhan ng mga bagay na ginagawa natin. Okay? So this is what we call as morality. It is the effort to guide one's conduct by reason. That is do what there are the best reasons for doing while giving equal weight to the interests of each individual who will be affected by what one does. So, yun po yung bagay na kailangan nating maintindihan. And also, as we move along, we first have to understand also the meaning of ethics. Itong ibig sabihin ng course na pinag-aaralan natin. Anybody who wants to read this slide, please. Raise your hand lang po, baka may gusto kong magbasa. Huwag po kayong mahiya bago ko magtawag. Go ahead, please. Wala bang magre-raise ng hand nila? Hi, Angelo Gio Pita. Angelo Gio, where are you? Are you there, sir? Angelo? My microphone? Is your microphone working, Angelo? Mukhang hindi gumagana yung microphone ni... Angelo. Hi, Mark. Gabriel. Hi, Mark. Gabriel. Go ahead, please. Mark? Wait lang, sir. Naririk niyo, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Please read the slide. Go ahead. Ethics refers to the philosophical concept of morality. It's endeavor to understand moral concepts and justify moral principles. It analyzes concepts such as right and wrong, 
principles of right behavior that will serve the right to action for people to follow. Okay. So, thank you very much, Mark. So, again, when we talk about the concept of ethics, okay, ito yung philosophical concept of morality. Now, when you talk about ethics, this is one of the main big branches of philosophy. Okay? So, ito po yung ibig sabihin dito ng ethics. Hi, Mark. Do we have a problem over there? Nag, nag, medyo may kinakol ako ng attention ni Mark. Mark Denberg Castillo, are you okay? Uh, no worries, Mark. No, no worries. So, uh, if it's co uh, convenient with you, pwede namang uh, uh, sunod ka na lang dito. So, you don't have to worry about it. Again, when we talk about ethics, this refers to the philosophical concept of morality. At ano ang goal niya? It actually endeavors to understand moral concepts and justify moral principles. So, sinusubukang unawain ng konsepto ng ethics kung ano nga ba ang moralidad and how do we justify moral principles? It also analyzes kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng tama at mali and somehow to establish principles of right behavior that will serve as our guide, okay, to action for people to follow. Okay. Now, para lang ho mas maintindihan natin dito, let's look at the chart here. So here we'll try to distinguish between ethics and morals. Okay, so we have here on our left, makikita natin dito yung ibig sabihin ng ethics. Okay, and on your right, doon po sa may green naman, makikita natin dito yung uh, anong ibig sabihin ng morals na tinatawag natin. Okay, um, where is, gusto kong magtawag, okay, uh, Jigs, De Roma. Jigs, are you there? Hi, Jigs. Yeah. Jigs? Hi, Jigs. Lapit ka ng konti sa microphone mo, Jigs. Yeah. Hi, Jigs. Can we read yung mga nasa may color blue? Yung nakalagay sa kung anong ibig sabihin ng ethics, please. Yung apat na yan. Pakibasa po. Guiding principles of conduct of an individual or a group. Okay. But question field, organization, etc. Related to professional work, uniform compared to moral. Okay, thank you very much, Jig. So nakita natin dito yung uh, ibig sabihin ng ethics. Later on, I will be expounding on it one by one. But for now, uh, anybody who wants to read yung ibig sabihin naman ng morals on our right. Okay, Maureen Deocaris, are you there, Maureen? Hi, Maureen. Hello, Maureen. Wala yatang microphone si Maureen. Okay. Ah, walang mic. Okay lang. Okay lang po. Wala pong problema. Um, Ezekiel Ebron. Ezekiel Ebron. Ebron, nandiyan ka ba? Hello, sir. May microphone? Wala. Hello. Wala? Mukhang wala po doon. Sinong gustong magbasa nitong part na ito sa morals? Anybody who wants to raise their hand? Wala? Okay. Um, Aldrich? Ako na lang, sir. Uh, sige. Ah, sige. Si Mark. Si Mark gustong magbasa. Nag-raise ng hand si Mark. Mark, go ahead. Principles on which... Rinig niya, sir. Zeke, hindi ka namin marinig, Zeke. Si Mark na lang muna. Ayos muna yung audio mo. Yes, Mark. Go ahead, please. Principle on which one's judgment of right and wrong are based, influenced by society, culture, and religion, not related to professional work, very according to the different cult religion. Okay, thank you very much. Now, if you are going to look at the comparison between ethics and morals, one of the things that you will find out is that when you talk about ethics, it's actually leaning towards more on the professional side, right? So you talk about guiding principles of conduct of an individual or group. Say, for example, ang mga medical doctors natin, our heroes at the moment, yung mga health workers natin, mga healthcare professionals natin, they have their own code of conduct, right? And this code of conduct is very much influenced by their profession. Ano ba yung oath of uh, 
uh, code of ethics na tinatawag natin ng uh, mga uh, ng ating mga uh, physician and even our nurses. So, when we talk about ethics, it's more related on the professional side of things. It's more uniform in comparison to morals. Pag sinabi natin uniform, iisa lamang po ito. Ito yung kanilang guidelines na sunod bilang mga professionals, professionals on that field. But, if you were going to look at the uh, morals of people, ang nakalagay po rito, these are principles on which one's judgment of right and wrong are based. And usually, this is more so um, influenced by the society, culture, and religion. Meaning, this is very much dependent on the environment of an individual. Pag pinag-usapan natin ang moralidad ng isang tao, it's not related to professional work, but it varies according to different cultures and religion. Okay? I think during our first and last session, I talked and, and, and I think I gave you an example of how things somehow are very much different between uh, Filipino and uh, the Korean context in terms of how we somehow manifest respect to older people, right? Yung sinabi ko sa inyo noon that for, for Filipinos, kapag ikaw ay kinakausap ng mga magulang mo, say for example, ikaw ay napagsasabihan, nasa sermon na ng magulang, ayaw ang magulang natin na palingalinga tayo ng ating... Uh, ng ating muka. Gusto nila nakatutok tayo sa kanila if possible nakatingin tayo sa kanila and that's respectful for them. Kapag hindi natin ginawa yon, we will be deemed as disrespectful. However, in a, a, a very Confucianic society like uh, South Korea, they have a different manifestation of how respect should be done by people. Doon kapag ikaw ay pinapagalitan ng magulang mo, hindi pwedeng ikaw ay titingin sa mata kung hindi dapat ikaw ay nakayuko at ang lagi lang nilang sasabing ne umma ne upa ne ne ganun lang palagi yes mama yes papa okay but you don't look at them in their eyes because that would be deemed as disrespectful meaning when you talk about the concept of what is right and wrong in terms of morality this is very much embedded on what we think is right and wrong in the perspective of our culture ito po yung differences ng ethics and morals. Okay, naintindihan po natin. And so we shall now proceed with the concept of moral standards. According to Mason, ang sabi niya po rito, he describes that morality is achieved when a set of possible mores, ang pronunciation po niya ay mores, but it's spelled as M-O-R-E-S, okay, of any social group are observed and achieve. Now, mores are strongly held norms. Ibig sabihin, pag sinabi nating norms, if you are already done with your SS31, which is understanding the self, there is a chapter there na ang pinag-uupan is ano, uh, the self as a social construct. Tama po. And part of our understanding of the self as a social construct is we have to understand the norms of our society. And when we talk about Norms, these are the socially acceptable behavior of people in our society. Because again, when we speak of mores, these epitomize or give us an idea of the deeply held standards of what is right and wrong in the society. Kaya nga po tayo mayroong word na normal. Doon po sa word na, na norm nang galing po ito. The word normal ay nang galing po sa word na norm. Ibig sabihin, when you are doing what is socially prescribed of the society of what is right and wrong, then you are deemed as what? Normal. Kapag naman, you are going against the socially prescribed actions of people in your society, you are deemed as what? Of course, we don't call people abnormal. We we use that term in psychology. But in sociology, we don't say that these are uh, abnormal people, What, but we call them as what? Deviant. Okay? So they try to defy the social structure of the society. They try to go against what is socially prescribed of people. Now, to analyze what is morally acceptable or not, it's always important to look at the definition of morality okay, and the standards that point out whether an action is actually right or wrong. Okay, so dito tayo babalik palagi. Pag pinag natin yung concept ng what is right and wrong. Now, when we talk about moral standards, okay, pakibasa naman po ito. May gusto po bang magbasa? Anyone who wants to read this uh, slide on screen, please? Anybody? 
All right. Uh, Angelo, go ahead, please. Moral standards are those ethical principles that we live by and believe. These are important blueprints of our behavior, which we abide by daily and are influenced by our society or by certain ethical universals. Okay, thank you very much, uh, sir. Now, again, when we talk about moral standards, ano, these are ethical principles na pinaniniwalaan natin at isinasabuhay natin. Blueprints, kung baga, okay, ng ating kilos araw-araw. And definitely, when we talk about moral standards, this is very much influenced by our society, ng ating lipunan, or perhaps by certain ethical universals. When you talk about ethical universal, an example of which is the... A universal concept of respect. Alam natin pare-pareho sa buong mundo ang ibig sabihin ng respeto. But then again, when you talk about the manifestation of the universal, of the ethical universal respect, it varies from culture to culture. It varies depending on the settings of people. Dahil iba-iba tayo ng ating mga pinaniniwalaan. Ang question natin dito, are there universal principles which should be invoked before making or giving in a moral act? Perhaps there is. May mga universal principles. But then again, what we need to understand is that the manifestation of these universal principles vary from culture to culture. Katulad ng binigay ko example sa inyo, respect is something that we value a lot as Filipinos and even Koreans. But the manifestation of this universal principle varies from culture to culture. Culture. Now, since we are able to define what moral standards are, let us now look at what non-moral standards are. Anyone who wants to read this, please. Gusto po bang magbasa? We're already 31 in our session today. Marami pong salamat. So that's around 80% already of our class. Okay, may gusto po bang magsalita? Anyone who wants to read this part? Okay, let me just inform you people that our... Online class today is being recorded so that your classmates will not be able to join us today. Pwede ho nila itong balikan. Just click on Blackboard Collaborate. Then you can check on the recorded sessions para ho mabalikan nila rito at maaral yung ating mga pinag-aaralan din naman. Anyone who wants to read this, non-moral standards, please. Okay. Benigno, please kindly read. Non-moral standards are those unwanted principles which are in opposition to everything that we are expected to be and do. Likewise, non-moral standards are influenced largely by the constructs prescribed in our society. So, when we talk about non-moral standards, thank you, Benigno, no? Ang importante lang na malaman dito, this is the opposite of moral standards. So, kung yung moral standards, ito yung sinasabuhay natin araw-araw, these are the opposites. These are everything that we are not expected to be and to do. Now, if moral standards are very much influenced by our society, by the social constructs, by the norms of our society, likewise, yung mga non-moral standards, these are also influenced by the cultural prescriptions. Okay, pag sinabi natin prescriptions, ito yung piniprescribe ng ating lipunan na tama at mali, mga bagay na dapat ba nating ginagawa o hindi. Okay, so these are things that we have to at least consider. Now, our question right now is this, okay? Why is it that only human beings belong to a certain standard of morality? Okay, ang tanong natin dito, ulitin natin, ano, bakit kaya ang mga tao lamang ang kayang magdesisyon ng tama at mali? Anybody who wants to answer, why is it that only human beings can be considered as ethical? Or if we may say, why is it that only human beings can be considered as moral? Bakit kaya? Anyone? May gusto po bang sumagot? Hi, Aldrich. Go ahead, please. Um, sir, yung animals po kasi, trigger lang po yung responses sila through flight and, fight and flight. So, ang okay. decision-making po nila, ang decision-making po nila naka-respond kung ano po yung nasa paligid nila. Yung humans po, meron po tayong okay. certain uh, brain parts na kung ano po yung natin, mag-process po na information, tapos magtabi po kung ano po yung gagawin natin. May, so, yung sa ethical po, sir, depende na po sa tao kung gagawin po ba niya yung tama o gagawin po niya yung mali. Depende po sa bigay sa kanya na na position so may decision po na gagawin niya. 
Okay, thank you very much, Alrich. That's very uh, that's very good. I also uh, I also saw Mark. You raised your hand. You want to answer? So go ahead, please. Mark. And then Mark. Ah, na sagot na. Okay, thank you very much. Now, when we talk about why human beings only can become ethical, according to Goldberg, ito po ang sabi niya. Ang mga tao daw, we can be ethical because we are capable of making judgments, okay? We are capable of making judgments about our own and other people's behavior and ito yung difference natin sa mga animals. We have the capacity consciously, a conscious capacity to change the way we behave and the society as a whole. That is the reason why it is only humans who are able to make moral choices because we can reflect, we can rethink, and we can realign our actions to what is morally and ethically acceptable. Now, these choices, we have to understand, are not inherent in other li living beings. Meaning, hindi po inherent sa kanila ito. Walang conscience Okay, conscious capacity ang mga animals to actually change their ways, to reflect on their behavior. And it's very different from us human beings because we have this inherent power in us to reflect, to rethink, and to realign our actions kung ano yung tama at mali. Thus, tayo pong mga tao, we are in a very special position because we are given that innate capability to make moral decisions. Okay? So, I hope that's very clear. Okay? Kasama rin po yung sinabi ng ating kaibigan kanina ni Aldrich why human beings can only be ethical and not yung mga animals. And also, part of our discussion this afternoon will be focusing also on moral dilemma. Okay? Pag pinag-usapan natin itong konsepto ng moral dilemma, ano ba ang ibig sabihin nito? Pag pinag-usapan natin itong moral dilemma. Okay. Now, according to um, H. E. Mason, sabi niya rito, yung nakalagay dito sa may slide natin, ano, moral conflict is a fact of moral life. Diba? And habang tumatanda tayo, habang nagkakaroon tayo ng muwang sa mundo, mas nare-realize natin that life, living life is not that easy. Especially making decisions is not easy. There are conflicting interests of people surrounding us and sometimes individual conflicting interest as well. And sometimes may mga ginagawa tayong mga bagay na gusto nating gawin but we do not intend to do because we know that it is not right. And in, that, in those situations, nagkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag nating moral dilemma. Now, Moral conflict is a fact of moral life, something that we can never do away with. Hindi natin may iwasan yun because it is embedded in the crucial decisions that we make, particularly in moments that we are faced with what is and what should be. Because again, people, as moral as we want to be, there are moments that our convictions, yung ating uh, convictions na kinatatayuan, yung mga tama na tiniting yung mga bagay na tiniting ng tama our convictions are often challenged and if not strong enough are dejectedly compromised there are moments that we compromise our convictions and these challenges are products dun sa evolving values and moral systems of our society it is always necessary th then that we are in touch with the norms of our society as definitely it mirrors the moral consciousness, okay? The moral consciousness of our people. What are the usual moral dilemmas na kinakaharap ng mga estudyante katulad ninyo, if I may ask? Ano yung mga usual na moral dilemmas na kinakaharap ng mga estudyante katulad ninyo? Sige nga po. Let's talk about moral dilemma. Ano yung mga karaniwan na kahabang kayo nag-aaral, ano yung mga moral dilemma na uh, usually kinakarap ng mga estudyante? I will give some uh, an example. Um, to cheat or not to cheat during quizzes or exams. Okay, that's a moral dilemma. You know that cheating is wrong, but sometimes you are faced with a dilemma whether you will be cheating or not. Okay. Yes, sir. Ano pa yung mga usual moral dilemmas na kinakaharap ng mga estudyante, if I may ask? 
Sige nga po. Kung papasok ba o hindi siya? Kung papasok ba o hindi. Ngayon wala kayong choice. Okay. <laughs> okay. So kung papasok ba o hindi, sino yung sumagot noon? Kung papasok ba o hindi? Sino sumagot ng kung papasok sino, o hindi? Sino? Baskonsilyo, sir. O Baskonsilyo, Mark. Tama? Mark, question. Bakit nagiging moral dilemma para sa mga estudyante? Although, uh, hindi naman sobrang bigat because you are students anyway. Why do you think it has become a moral dilemma for students whether they would go to classes or not? To cut classes or what? Bakit kaya? Isang ba? Ano? Hindi niya po gusto yung course. <laughs> Parang, Pag hindi niya gusto yung course niya. Oh sir, tas parang hindi mo na sa kanya kung papasok ba o hindi o susundin niya yung magulang niya o magkakating. O magkakating ba siya? Ganun, okay, I'll put you on the spot. Okay, may pagkakataon bang hindi ka na pumasok sa klase dahil ayaw mo? Hindi, ayaw mo sa course? Wala sir. Ha? Ano na na? <laughs> hindi pa nangyayari ano, sa akin, no? sir. I think lahat naman tayo nagkakaroon ng dilema ano, kapag ganyan. Lalo na yung mga factor na minsan nakakaantok magturo yung teacher. Minsan uh, mas mabuti pang ikaw na lang mag-aral kaysa makinig ka sa klase. Um, yung iba, well I don't know the, the, the reasons, uh, the other reasons of students why they are struggling with that. Okay, that's another one. How about other questions? Okay, ano pa yung mga moral dilemma na usually kinakaharap ng mga estudyante? Okay, pwede niyo pong i-chat dito yung mga sagot niyo. Pwede kayong sumagot through our chat group. Okay, pwede naman sa may audio rito para ma-recognize ko kayo. Para naman at least alam ko na nandyan pa kayo't gumagalaw-galaw sa inyong paligid. Okay. Ayun, Enas. Ito si, si Ena, merong sagot. Ang sabi ni Ena, if mag-aaral para sa quiz o oh, hindi. Okay. Patay tayo dyan. Lalo na kung ano, pagod sa school. Okay. If mag-aaral para sa quiz o hindi. Okay. Kay Maureen naman, ang sabi ni Maureen kung mag-shift po ng course or hindi. Ang mahirap dito siguro, no, doon sa mag-shift po ng course or hindi, may mga, may mga minsan kasi, no, and I don't want to intrude doon sa mga usapan ninyo sa mga parents ninyo, but there are situations when uh, perhaps... May mga estudyante kasi na kaya nila kinukuha yung programs nila because they were actually asked by their parents to take the programs na kinukuha nila. And sometimes um, they have to be obliged okay, to, to say yes to their parents. Okay? And I do hope that at least ano, kahit pa paano, masasolve natin ito. Kasi mahirap din naman nakuhanin mo ang isang uh, program na hindi mo gusto. Pero uh, you have to understand people Say, for example, you are being asked by your parents to take the course that you are in right now, and you know very well that you do not still know what to do with your life. Wag kayong aalis dyan because you should not be wasting your time. Okay? Perhaps there will come a, mo a moment in your life that you will realize whether you like it or not. Or perhaps, pwedeng pagbigyan nyo muna ang parents ninyo, and after that, you can talk with your parents and finally decide on your own. Okay? Um, yung ito naman, yung kay Dane, ito kay Aldrich, sabi niya, kung gagastusin yung baon o iipunin ba? Aldrich, bakit na mong problema ka? Parang ang dami mong baon na ah. Okay. Sige, Aldrich, bakit nagiging dilema sa'yo ang paggastos ng baon o iipunin mo ba ito? Uh, sir, depende po kasi yun sa ano, kung sakali man. Kung di naman po importante yung bibilin, gusto ko lang bilhin. Mm. Eh, bibilin ko ba yun o iipunin ko na, na yung baon? So, Kailangan ko din kasi ng, ng ipon, sir, for emergencies din siguro. Consider mm -hmm. ko lang po yung ganun. Okay, so, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay, thank ne, you. So, yung pag... Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Now, si Daniel naman sabi niya kung itetake yung course o hindi. Si John Gabriel naman kung maliligo o hindi. Hindi ko alam kung bakit kailangan maging struggle ang paliligo o hindi, lalo na ngayong naka-quarantine period tayo. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Parang kalimutan ang paliligo. I will give you a certain moral dilemma na kinakaharap ng maraming mga estudyante kapag sila ay nasa kolehiyo na. Sometimes there are parents who are actually um, have this instruction. 
if not a plea okay uh, yung mga sa mga anak nila nag-aaral ang usapan ay ganito anak pwede kaya na ngayong ikaw ay nag-aaral baka naman sana wag ka munang mag-boyfriend wag ka munang mag-girlfriend right so ito nagiging dilema ng maraming mga estudyante definitely Kapag dumating sa punto na meron silang nagustuhan at nagkagustuhan sila at ayan na, umibig na. Ayan ay iisipin mo ang sabi ng mami at ng daddy, sana wala mo ng love life pero eto ako ngayon, umiibig. Di ba? <laughs> sabi ni Binigno, hindi daw dapat dilema yon Pero sa ibang mga estudyante, nagiging dilema yon because there are there are um there are parents who really are requesting for their kids not to be in a relationship while they are studying. And we have to respect that. We have to understand where they are coming from. Because uulitin po natin, may mga pagkakatao na may mga estudyante na kapag sila ay umibig na, minsan nawawala sa wisho at nawawala sa konsentrasyon sa pag-aaral. Well, I'm not saying that everybody's like that because there are students also na kapag nagkakaroon ng love life, nakakatulong naman sa kanila ito. But we face the reality that there have been a lot of instances, okay, ang ginagawa talaga ay ano, nasisira. Lalo na kapag ano, kapag nag-break na. Halimbawa, uh, dalawang estudyante na first year pa lamang ay naging magjowa na and their their world revolved around themselves doon lang sa kanilang dalawa kaya lang pagdating ng fourth year anong nangyari okay nagbreak silang dalawa anong nangyari kawawa naman itong si babae dahil unang-una hindi siya nagkaroon ng kaibigan dahil umik ang mundo niya ang mundo niya doon sa kanyang boyfriend lamang okay so hindi niya na expand yung kanyang community okay yung uh, yung kanyang community sana because all along he thought that she thought perhaps that everything will go well kaya lang nagbreak sila para sa mga lalaki naman sana naman maiisip sana natin di ba na kapag hindi pa hinog Wag niyo munang pipitasin. Tapos naman eh, kung pipitasin niyo, wag niyo namang itatapon. Okay? Nako. Naintindihan natin? <laughs> Hindi pa yes, nga namumukadkad, pinipitas na. Yeah, yeah. Wag mo nang itapon. Okay? Naintindihan mo ba ako, Benigno? <laughs> okay. Okay. Tuloy-tuloy po tayo. Okay, let's try to define what moral dilemmas Are. Now, when we talk about moral dilemmas, pakibasa naman po ito. Who wants to read this part, please? Okay, Angelo, go ahead, please. As Mason explains, we will experience a moral dilemma if we are faced with two actions, of each of which it would be correct to say the appropriate sense of ought, that is ought to be done and both of which we cannot do. Okay. Now, when we talk about moral dilemma, na-experience daw natin ito. Thank you, Angelo. Kapag merong dalawang bagay na option mo. Okay? So, this is the situation. This is the option. Perhaps, this is a situation sa iba, no? Dami of you do, dami of you don't. Okay? Sometimes, it would be correct to say na meron tayong kailangang gawin doon sa isang yon. At yung isa naman, alam natin na ito'y hindi dapat natin ginagawa. This means that we either what? We either go straight or do it the other way. Because again, we have to make moral choices. Okay, kapag gagawa tayo ng moral choices, dapat kasama yung ating moral reasoning. Because as we become more conscious doon sa mga issues and dilemmas ng mga tao sa lipunan natin, the more that we ought to live by the moral principles that we believe are helpful and beneficial to our society. Okay, nakita na natin yan kanina. Ituloy na lang uh, po natin ito dito. Um, this is supposed to be a video but I don't know. Perhaps we'll not be able to watch this. Okay, tuloy na lamang po tayo dito. Let's talk about the three levels of moral dilemma in the workplace. Okay, pag pinag-usapan natin yung three levels of moral dilemma um, 
in the workplace. Okay, dito na po tayo ngayon. Now, ethical dilemmas, hindi lang naman po ito doon sa ating mga personal na buhay. In fact, even sa ating pagtatrabaho, nagkakaroon din tayo ng mga uh, moral dilemmas. The stress in the workplace is not just a result of beating deadlines yung kapag tayo may mga boss na, but also of ethical issues surrounding the workplace as it is very important that employees live up to certain standards na pinaprescribe ng companies and their organizations. It is also very much significant for the employees to uphold ethical standards in and for the community. Now, tingnan po natin ito, the first ethical uh, levels of moral dilemma, the first level of moral dilemma is this. We talk about the individual level of moral dilemma. Pakibasa naman po ito, please. Anyone? Sino pong gustong magbasa ng part na ito? Individual uh, moral dilemma. Mark, go ahead, please. Mark, go ahead. Hello, Mark. Can you read? Dilemma here. Sir, go ahead. The, dil the dilemma is ethical to that of his or her employer, which in the workplace. Okay, medyo nag-chopy tayo doon, but thank you, sir. Okay, again, when we talk about individual moral dilemmas, ito po'y kapag yung iyong mga tinatayuan ay iba doon sa tinatayuan ng iyong employer. Magkakaroon definitely ng tension dito. Kapag halimbawa merong pinagawa ang boss mo sa iyo na ayaw mo dahil tingin mo mali yun. Dito po uh, nangyayari yung tinatawag nating individual moral dilemma. The next one is what we call as the organizational dilemma. Okay, pakibasa. Anna Joy Anyonwebo, are you there? Anna Joy? Hi, Anna Joy. Anna Joy, andyan ka ba? Ethical standards are seen in company policies. Still and all, there might be a gap between those who run the business whose ethical standards deviate from that of the organization. This might cause ethical challenges and conflicts for those who are working in the company. Thank you, Anna. Now, when we talk about organizational moral dilemma, ang pinag-uusapan natin dito, of course, you have the mission and vision statement of organization. However, minsan, may mga pagkakataon baka dumating na may mga boss doon sa organization who would somehow try to go against the standard, ethical standard of the organization, ito po yung pwedeng mag ng ethical challenges and conflicts. Okay? Para doon sa mga nagtatrabaho, doon po sa kumpanyang kanilang nabibilangan. And lastly, we have what we call as the systemic level of moral dilemma. Okay? Tingnan po natin. Where is um, John Gabriel Escalona? John Gabriel, are you there? Jan Gabriel. Ayan, mukhang walang sir. OCG. Yes, sir. Pakibasa naman po. The ethics are predisposed by the larger operating environment of the company. Political pressure, economic conditions, social attitude, and other can affect the operating standard and policies of the organization. But it might face moral dilemmas outside of organization that within the micro society very Okay, let me give you an example of a systemic moral dilemma. Say, for example, everything is going well in your company, right? You uphold moral standards. But then again, biglang doon sa inyong syudad, panahon ng eleksyon, lumapit ang secretary ni Vice Mayor at ang sabi ng secretary doon sa inyong company, baka naman ho, pwede kayong mag-donate na isang milyong piso para sa kampanya ng ating vice mayor para sa darating na election. But, of course, yung company ninyo, they would not want to be okay um, identified na nagbibigay ng tulong sa mga politiko, in particular to those who they do not really believe. So, bilang ikaw yung bawa manager ng, or, na, or ikaw yung may-ari ng company doon, ano yung gagawin mo would you turn it down or are you going to help? And if you're going to turn it down, how are you going to say it? Paano mo sasabihin yun ng 
mapayos doon sa tao mula sa may uh, kapitolyo or sa may munisipyo na nagsasabing bigyan mag magdonate kayo okay ng ng pera para sa kampanya noong uh, tumatakbo tatakbo ulit na vice mayor diba? mahirap 'yon uh, para doon kasi you talk about political pressures okay you talk about um, economic conditions it's it's very difficult there's a lot of moral dilemma say for example sa company because of economic conditions kailangan mag lay off ng ilang mga uh, ng ilang mga uh, workers natin and that could be terrible okay for for some of them now individual moral dilemmas okay ito pala may question tayo dito ayan should employees experiencing moral dilemmas at work leave their job no matter how compensating they are for them yun ho bang mga nagtatrabaho pero are experiencing a lot of moral dilemmas at their work kailangan ba at dapat ba silang umalis doon sa trabahong yun because their morality is already being compromised kahit na malaki ang kanilang sinasahod doon sa kanilang trabaho. Okay, John Domingo, are you there? John Domingo? John Domingo, are you there? John Domingo Balimbing? Okay, may other, may microphone ka ba? Mukhang walang mukhang walang microphone. Sige, Mark, go ahead, please. What do you think? Go ahead, Mark. Mark? Yes, sir. Yes, please. Kindly, you want to answer? Dapat bang umalis yung mga empleyadong nagtatrabaho na nakokompromise na yung kanilang morality dun sa trabahong yun. Pero ang laki ng sinasahod nila. Kailangan ba sila mag-resign? Sir, sa tingin. Sir, lapit tayo ng konti sa microphone. Medyo mahina yung reception mo. Sir, sa tingin ko hindi, sir. Bakit naman po? Kasi isip mo rin yung pamilya mo, sir. Kasi pag umalis ka sa trabaho mo na yun, sir, syempre, yung sahod mo, sir, mawala kang sahod. Yung pamilya, magsasabar din. So, mas okay na lang na ikaw na lang yung magsasabar sa buong pamilya mo, sir. So, lulunukin mo ba ang paggawa ng mali? <laughs> this is a moral dilemma. I mean, <laughs> nandun ka and you are faced with the truth na merong mga pinapagawa sa yung hindi na tama and you know that you have been that you have morally compromised a lot of things already. Will you still continue to do it or will you leave your job? Pero naiintindihan naman natin yung sagot mo kasi magsasuffer ang family mo. What are you gonna do? Mas or life and death situation sir. Pre. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Patay sign gano wala sir. Yung <laughs> ano sir, wala, 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 sa company wala. sir. As long as walang ganong Okay, thank you very much. Uh, class, I want to hear your perspective. Pwede niyo pong sagutin yung aking tanong sa may chat box natin kung kayo ay magre-resign ba or hindi at bakit. Sino pa yung gustong sumagot dito sa atin pong uh, audio? Sino pa yung mga okay ang microphones dyan? Kindly raise your hand para ho ma-recognize natin kayo and if you want to answer the question here. Go ahead, please. Si, meron ba? Sir. Ako sir. Uh, sino po ito? Mark? Angelo Tobiera. Tobiera oh, Angelo, go ahead. Angelo. Sir, sa tingin ko po, <coughs> Sir, sa tingin ko po, pag, uh, kapag hindi na talaga kaya, yung mga, yung mga, dapat kasi health unahin eh. Uh, Mag-resign na lang po. Mag-resign ka na lang kahit wala nang makakain ang pamilya mo. Marami pa naman pong jobs na pwedeng makuha. Sampu ang anak mo, panganay lahat. <laughs> hindi na ba? Hindi sir, ba? I, ano? <laughs> I'm sure they can I'm sure they can ano naman po, they can uh, understand the situation kasi health din ng health ko rin ang nakataya Okay, so for you, magre-resign ka you will not be compromising your moral standards kahit na wala na kayong pera, hindi ka na makakapag-aral ng sampu, mapapag-aral yung sampung anak mo 
you'll still will oh, be sir, compromising. Opo oh, sir, pag maghahanap na lang po ng ibang job na mas makakapag makakatusto sa sa pamilya po. Uh, thank you very much, Angelo. Okay, thank you very much for your answer. Sabi ni Danica dito sa ating chat box, si Danica Joyce uh, Milianes. Sabi niya, para po sa akin, sir, hindi po ako magre-resign if ever. Kasi po, mahirap na po maghanap ng trabaho. <laughs> Tiis-tiis na lang po ganoon. Okay, okay madaling sabihin yung ano, no, magtitiis-tiis tayo. Pero ang problema natin dito, papano kung nagiging overly stressful na yung nararamdaman mo sa trabaho and it's already at is taking a toll on your health. Okay? Yung physical health mo at ang yung mental health. So, these are moral dilemmas. Well, I do hope that it's not going to happen to us in the future. But if in case may mangyaring ganun, I hope we could we will be able to consider a lot of things even before bago tayo mag-decide. Okay, sa mga bagay-bagay po na yun. Okay, now, individual moral dilemmas are far more uh, challenging. Okay, may sagot dito si Aldrich. Sabi ni Aldrich, depende po sa akin, sir. Kung ako lang po yung nadadamay, okay lang. Kung may ibang tao pong madadamay, aalis na lang po ako sa trabaho. Sabi naman ni Isaiah Manuel, I take care of my mental health muna, sir. Baka maging unproductive lang po ako sa work at dumala pa. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, para tayong radio program dito. No? Okay, let's continue now. Individual moral. Uh, Angelo, you you want to answer again? Go ahead, please. Ano po yon? You raise your hand, Angelo. Nakalimutan lang po pati yung raise hand. <laughs> okay, okay, no worries. Okay, now individual moral dilemmas are far more challenging as we are tasked to decide on the morality of our actions. Now. In order for us to manage ethical challenges, there is a need to make sure that our decisions should be well thought out. So, may kita niyo sa may screen yung ayon. This is what we call as the practical Kantian mode of ethical issues management. I hope may wanted po sa mga screens natin. Ito ng nakalagay sa may the practical Kantian model of ethical issues. Management dito. So, kung makikita po natin ito, yung konsepto ng autonomy, tingnan natin sa my left side po natin. When we talk about autonomy, we are referring to freedom. Okay, this is the freedom section. And we will try to uh, somehow manage yung mga ethical issues by answering these questions. Unang-una, dito sa my autonomy sections, there is a question that we have to answer. What is this question? Nakalagay po rito sa my part na ito para po hindi tayo malito. This is the question. Am I acting from the basis of reason alone? Because again, when we talk about morality, we have to consider it has to be morally reasonable yung ating ginagawa. So the question is, am I acting from the basis of reason alone? Now, how would you know that you are acting on the basis of reason alone? Una-una, we have to rule out any political influence. And when we talk about political influence, hindi lang po ito sa pagpapatakbo sa gobyerno. Okay? You talk about uh, politicking sa loob ng trabaho or sa my workplace. Another thing that we have to rule out is monetary influence. Hindi ba ito dinigawa kong desisyon dahil lamang sa pera? Okay? And another one is pure self-interest. For you to be able to understand and to know that your decision is based on reason alone, kailangan matanggal natin itong tatlong ito. Dapat walang political influence. There has to be no monetary influence and definitely dapat wala pong pure self-interest. Ngayon, kapag ho na-rule out na natin itong tatlong ito and our sagot is yes, okay, we are acting on the basis of reason alone, then we can proceed to decision making. Okay, nakikita ko natin dito, proceed to decision making. Kapag sinabi naman natin meron dito sa tatlong ito, halimbawa ay ang decision natin merong uh, involved na pera. So, ang sagot dito, no, I am being subjective. So, what do we do? We defer our decision. Hindi muna tayo magde-decide. 
to another manager or perhaps since hindi pa naman tayo nagtatrabaho perhaps we try to consult our parents those people who we feel and think are uh, would have the wisdom to help us out doon sa ating moral dilemma okay so kapag nag-defer na tayo so do, what do we do okay so magkakaroon na tayo ng decision Kapag pakiramdam, you are, you are becoming subjective. Do not continue immediately to decision making. You have to defer your decision. Huwag mo nang magde-decide. Okay? You first, okay, look for a group of people whom you perhaps know by heart that who could help you out. And then that's the moment na kapag ikaw ay nakapag-consult na sa kanila if you have them. That's the only moment that you try to make individual decision. But then again, if your answer is yes, there is no political influence, no money influence, this is not out of pure self-interest, then you make an individual decision or perhaps if it is a group decision, then you make a group consensus decision. However, dito po sa may part na ito, kapag tayo ay nag-decide na, there are three questions that we have to consider also. Now, each person should consider the following questions. Una, could I obligate everyone else who is ever in a similar situation to do the same thing I am about to do or we are about to do? Yun bang gagawin mong desisyon kapag sa ibang tao sasabihin mo ito rin yung dapat na maging desisyon mo kasi ito yung tama. Second question, would I accept this decision if we were on the receiving end. Pag sinabi nating receiving end, ikaw yung perhaps maapektuhan ng desisyon na yon. Ikaw pa rin ba? Yun pa rin ba yung magiging desisyon mo? And lastly, have I faced a certain ethical issue before? You know, it's easier for us actually to make decisions kapag may mga napagdaanan na tayo. But as young as you are at the moment, perhaps there will be times na pakiramdam mo sandali, parang hindi ko pa napagdadaanan to. So that's entirely a new uh, dilemma for you, perhaps a new journey. But you have to trust the process and you have to make sure that your decisions will be actually really good uh, considering the ethical repercussions whatever we will be doing. Now, another one is we look at the ethical consideration triangle. Now, consider each point of the triangle with each group inside the triangle. Okay? So, the question here is what? The question of duty. The question is what? Am I doing the right thing? Now, we have the concept of intention. Are we doing it with a morally good will? And the last one is a question of dignity and respect. Are dignity and respect actually maintained when we do these decisions, when we actually make these decisions? Now, kapag naayos na natin itong ethical triangle consideration, now magpo-proceed na tayo sa susunod, which is, <coughs> excuse me po, to communicate considerations. Now, this is a two-way communication with public suite. Uh, of course, this is in sa, sa mga organizations na po ito. Okay, and then we look at the result and then we are able to what? Okay, make an ethical issues management already. Okay, so yun po yung tinatawag nating practical model of ethical issues management according to Immanuel Kant. Now, as we move along, and this will be the last of our discussion this afternoon, we will be discussing about freedom as the foundation of ethics. Kanina po, doon sa may pinag-usapan natin, nakita ko natin dito sa practical Kantian model of ethical consideration yung autonomy section. Pag sinabi po nating autonomy section, ang pinag-uusapan po natin dito is the concept of freedom. We talk about the concept of independence. We talk about the concept of autonomy. Autonomy, freedom, independence, iisang salita lang po ito. We talk about our freedom. And here we say that freedom is our foundation of ethics. Now, when we talk about autonomy, when we talk about freedom, we speak of liberty, of independence, this literally means giving the law to oneself. Yes, uh, Mr. Timosnero, you have a question. Go ahead, sir. 
Sorry. Ano pin that lang. Okay, sige, tuloy po tayo. Now again, when we talk about autonomy, this means giving the law to oneself or perhaps our understanding provides laws that constitute the a priori framework of our experience. Pag sinabi nating a priori knowledge, pag sinabi nating a priori, it is actually dun sa may English meron tayong word na prior meaning this is independent of our experience. Hindi pa natin na-experience yung mga bagay-bagay. Now, to explain, his concept of autonomy or freedom as foundation of moral act, pinoint out ni Immanuel Kant, that moral rightness or moral wrongness apply only to free agents. And since tayong mga tao, we are free agents because we have the capacity to regulate our behavior and we have it in our power, okay? We either act rightly or no. That's why when we make choices, we must act under the idea of freedom. And so in making... Yes, Daryl, go ahead. You have a question. Yes, Daryl, you raise your hand. Pindu, Dar. Ah, okay. Sige, tuloy po tayo. Now, in making moral decisions, according to Immanuel Kant, he runs to human autonomy, meaning human freedom, as the principal foundation of morality. For him, free will becomes the foundation. Okay, let me do this. Okay, free will becomes the foundation of our moral act, which is also done out of moral responsibility. Now, this is important for us to understand that when we make decisions, we don't just make decisions for the sake of making decisions. We have to consider that we have our moral responsibility in our decision making. Okay? Hence, self-consciousness okay, becomes the highest principle. Okay? Since it is the basis for our understanding Okay, this structure, our understanding then, according to Kant, comes from reason rather than experience. Diba? Ang sabi nga nila sa atin, diba? Experience is the best teacher. Now, in philosophy, you don't have to rely on experience for you to understand what is right. You go to reason. You run to reason. Are things being reasonable? Now, if it's not reasonable and you think walang rationality yung iyong gagawin, do not do it. You don't need to experience a thing for you to understand whether it's right or wrong. Maliwanag po tayo? Pag sinabi sa atin na, halimbawa, alam mo nang kapag inuntog mo yung ulo mo sa pader ay masakit at ang sasabihin mo, mami, gusto kong maranasan yung sakit ng mauntog yung ulo ko sa pater. Now, that is not reasonable because you already know that for other people experience such, nung inuntog nila yung kanilang ulo sa pader, anong nangyari? Perhaps, nabagok sila. So, why do you need to experience such when rationally speaking, you know that it's not gonna do well for you? As for Kant, autonomy that is freedom comes from obeying the law for the right Reasons, And that's the reason why we obey the law because we obey the law for the right reasons. We do not act for self-serving interests but out of moral responsibility. Freedom does not give us the ability to decide similarly. In fact, we have our own free will. And our free will will definitely dictate that we have differences in self-consciousness. Iba-iba tayo ng self-consciousness and sometimes it's even more complicating the idea noong sinasabi ni Immanuel Kant na we look at freedom as the basis of morality. However, also, it could not be exclusive Okay, the basis, okay, the exclusive basis of our moral decisions. Kaya lang, hindi naman pwedeng hindi rin natin i-invoke yung ating reason in making moral judgments because definitely our reflections, our introspections, okay, are very much important in trying to understand kung ano yung tama at mali. Okay, so as our summary people, since not all people hold the same moral and ethical principles, we will eventually face moral dilemmas. And nonetheless, 
um, it will always be reasonable to act on moral issues based on what? Instinctive rationality. Okay, titingnan natin, am I being rational in my decision making? Or baka naman nasasapawan ako ng aking emotion. I am not saying that emotion is wrong, but you have to understand that you have to consider the rationality of things in making decisions just the same. Still and all, we have our freedom. We have our autonomy to decide on our own despite of the conflicting interests of the world forced on us. My question po ba tayo sa ating discussion today ng basic concept ng ethics? Any questions so far, people? Questions po? Hello? None po. Yes, Daryl. Hello, Daryl. question? May question, Daryl? Wala po, sir. Wala naman. Okay. Baka may question po kayo doon sa mga walang ano, sa chat box. Baka pwede tayong mag-respond naman kahit pa paano. Okay. Wala namang responses yung iba kahit pa paano. So, um, as we um, close our session on the basic concepts of ethics people, um, I would want for you to understand again that I will not be very strict on checking your attendance, okay? Um, sa online session natin because we were instructed to be very lenient with our students with regards to our um, online sessions. And for those who were not able to uh, join us for today's session, again, our lesson is being recorded para ho pagkatapos ng ating session, pwede nyo pong balikan sa Blackboard yung ating discussion and you can learn at your own face yun pong ating uh, decision at the moment. Okay, so it is very important that at least we try to understand yung ating uh, lesson kahit papaano. And I do hope that our online sessions, our Blackboard Collaborate sessions would help at least, okay, for most of us, for all of us, to understand yung atin pong lesson ngayon. Nakailang uh, Blackboard Collaborate session ba kayo ngayong araw? Marami ba? Nakailang yung... Ano yun? Ako pala. Ako pala. Seryoso ba? Meron meron po pagkatapos nito. Ah, meron kayo pagkatapos nito. How are you enjoying your online session anyway? Okay naman, sir. <laughs> okay lang po, sir. Okay lang. Okay, okay naman. Medyo mahirap? Ah, mahirap, sir. Opo, sir. Medyo, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Oo, medyo struggling tayo sa signal. Ano. Ayun din yung naging problema ko. That's the reason why hindi ako makapag-video conferencing sa inyo. Kasi if I try, maglalag ito at kailangan kung parang yung nangyayari ngayon, may mga naglalag in, lag out, lag in, lag out. Ganun yung mangyayari sa akin. So nakita ko, sabi ko, sige, pwede na yung audio session natin ngayon. This has been our session. Ano? This is um, the basic concept of ethics and this has been Yume 39. Um, for our ethics.